David Williams here to talk to you about bipolar junction transistor fixed point bias circuits and what we can see in this picture is a fixed point bias circuit here with the transistor and it's these resistors connected to the power supply the 16 volt power supply that sets it up in the fixed point bias circuit and what we can see over on this side is the characteristic curve for this particular transistor with a beta of about a hundred you can you can hopefully see that the beta is about 100 for this circuit and we picked a point where the beta is 103. Now fixed point bias circuits uh, have only one power supply so that gives them definitely an advantage over, over um, biasing circuits where you need more than one power supply but the disadvantage of this circuit as we'll see is it's highly dependent on this value of beta for the transistor and if, if uh, you've ever done some testing with transistors, you'll know that beta can vary pretty significantly from transistor to transistor, even within the same part number, even within the same batch even of transistors, the beta can vary a little bit. So I, I guess the best way to go about examining these fixed point bias circuits is to do an example. And what we're going to do is try to figure out for, for this particular circuit, what the load line is, so that would be all the possible values that that uh, a circuit like this with this transistor would allow on on um, on the characteristic curves, which characteristic curves it could possibly fall on, as well as figure out the actual DC operating point. So this is sometimes called the quiescent point or the Q point. So we'll figure out the load line and then figure out where in the load line the actual operating point is. So let's go to our circuit here. Now the first, the first thing that we're going to do is figure out where the points on the load line are. Well, I guess not figure out where the points of the load line are. We're going to figure out what the load line is. So to do that, we want to figure out the two, the two extremes. So first of all, for this particular circuit, if this was pushed into saturation, what would, what would the collector current be? So that's the IC sat. Figure out IC sat. Saturation current for the collector. And this the, the, the saturation current is just going to be 16 volts over 2500 ohms. Right, this IC sat is when, when the transistor is pushed into saturation. So that's when there's no voltage between the collector and the emitter. 16 volts over 2500 ohms. That gives me 6.4 milliamps. And the second thing we want to calculate is the other extreme VCE off. So what's the voltage between the collector and the emitter when there's no current flowing through this circuit? Well, that means no current going through the circuit, no current going through the resistor here. So that point there is also at 16 volts. This point's at ground. So we've got 16 volts right across the transistor. Now we know what the two extreme points of the of the load line are. Let's let's go back to this first diagram here, and and we'll, we'll plot them on this on this picture. So the IC side occurs when the VCE is at zero at zero volts. So we had six point four volts. So the one point is going to be about there, and the other case is when there's no collector current. So we got zero collector current and we had a collector emitter voltage of 16 volts so we're at 14 15 we're actually way out here at 16 volts so our load line let's see how straight a line i can draw here it's going to be the point connecting those so our operating point is going to fall somewhere on this load line now what we are our job next our next job is to figure out where it's going where it actually falls on the load line so we want to figure out we want to find the operating point, so that's going to be, we want to find the ICQ. Well, Q is the, stands for quiescent point, or the, it's, which is the operating point. And we want to find out what the VCEQ is. So the collector emitter voltage at the quiescent point. Now step one for doing this is to find IB. Find the base current. So the base current current going through here and so that it's of course going into the base which is why it's called the base current so what we can use we can use Kirchhoff's voltage law which says that 
in a in a complete loop the sum of the voltage drops should equal the sum of the voltage rises or the sum of the voltages is going to give us give us zero so in this particular case we've got a 16 volt battery so if we follow this, this loop from 16 volt battery down through the 965 kilo ohm resistor through the transistor and ground that loop should give us all of the drops in the loop should, e should equal be equal to zero volts so we're starting at 16 volts from the source, we're going to drop something due to the current going through that 965 kilo ohm resistor. Just using Ohm's law, V equals IR. Then we're going to have a voltage drop between the base emitter junction, which, which we're going to assume is about 0.7 volts, which will take us down to ground at zero volts. Now we can just solve for IB here. 16 minus 0 0.07 divided by 965,000 gives us a current of 1.59 times 10 to the minus 5 amperes. So that's how much current is flowing into the base. Step number two, find IC. And IC is simply equal to beta times IB. So for this example, we're going to have beta. We've got beta of 103 for our transistor times 1.59 times 10 to the minus 5 amps gives us a value of 1.64 milliamps. So that's actually the, the first value that we wanted to find, the ICQ. ICQ is equal to 1.64 milliamps. Now the final thing to do is the other point in the operating, the other operating point, the collector emitter voltage. So the collector emitter voltage is going to be the voltage between the collector and the emitter. And again, we're going to use Kirchhoff's voltage laws. Kirchhoff's voltage law. Kirchhoff's voltage law says that if we start at 16 volts, we drop a certain amount here, we drop the VCE here, that should bring us down to zero volts. So the equation is going to look like this 16 volts minus. Well, the voltage drop across the, the 2.5 kilo ohm resistor there is going to be IC, which is 1.64 milliamps, times 2,500 ohms, minus VCE, should bring us down to 0 volts. Just give myself a little bit more room there. Now, solving for VCE here, we're going to get VCE is equal to 11.9 volts. So I guess that's VECEQ, quiescent point. So we've got our ICQ, VCEQ operating points are equal to 1.64 milliamps, 11.9 volts. So that's our DC operating point for the, this particular fixed bias circuit. And then going back to our diagram over here with the load line, we had an IC of 1.64 milliamps, which lies about there. And we had a VCEQ of 11.9 volts, which lies about there. And you can see my rough line, my rough load line, I actually was pretty good in drawing that. And we can see that our operating point lies ab about here on our load line. And that's a fixed point bias circuit. There are more videos of, of bias circuits that I will post as well. And hopefully you learned a little bit about uh, BJT circuits. And I'll see you in the next video.